Hey friends, Pastor Dave here for our daily devotional. And today I just want to talk to you about the love that God has for us. There's a couple of beautiful passages in the Bible that show God's love as a metaphor. And I want to talk about one of them today, the story of Hosea. The story of Hosea is a beautiful picture of God's love, but it must not have been easy for Hosea because it was born out of a life that he had that very severely challenged his love. Hosea had a wife and she conceived a son and he named his son Jezreel, talking about God punishing Israel for the massacre of Jezreel. Then he had another daughter and he called her not my loved one. And he had a son and he called him not my people. I'm assuming these weren't really their names, but it might have been that their son was named my people, but he would call him not my people. Just saying Hosea did not believe that his wife was faithful and that his children probably were not really his children. It got so bad that it ended up his wife was sold as a slave. But God told Hosea, I want you to go and buy her back and take her back. What forgiveness that must have taken. What shame Hosea must have felt as he went into the crowd and he paid money for his own wife. But he did. He must have loved her deeply to be able to forgive all of that. But I think God used that pain for Hosea to remember. That's how God treats his people. They're unfaithful to him. They mistreat him. But he still loves them. Hosea chapter 11 is sort of a climax of this idea. Here's the words that Hosea says from God. When Israel was a child I loved him and out of Egypt I called my son. But the more they were called the more they went away from me. They sacrificed to the Baals. They burned incense to images. It was I who taught Ephraim to walk and taking them by the arms but they did not realize it was I who healed them. I led them with cords of human kindness with ties of love. To them I was like one who lifts a little child to the cheek and I bent down to feed them. Just a beautiful picture of God's love as like a parent's love for his children or husband's love for his wife. But then you hear the anger in God's next words. Will they not return to Egypt? And will not Assyria rule over them because they refuse to repent? A sword will flash in their cities. It will devour their false prophets and put an end to their plans. My people are determined to turn from me. Even though they call me God Most High, I will by no means exalt them. So it sounds like God's saying, no matter what they do, I'm not going to help them. God was angry. And I think God's anger is legitimate. He has righteous anger for our sin. But then look at the next verse. Hosea 11, 8 and following. How can I give you up, Ephraim? How can I hand you over, Israel? How can I treat you like Edma? How can I make you like Zeboim? Edma and Zeboim were a couple of the cities that were destroyed along with Sodom and Gomorrah. Sodom and Gomorrah were the big cities. There were other small towns nearby. And he's saying, how can I destroy you utterly? My heart is changed within me. All my compassion is aroused. I will not carry out my fierce anger, nor will I devastate Ephraim again, for I am God and not a man, the Holy One among you. I will not come against their cities. They will follow the Lord. He will roar like a lion. When he roars, his children will come trembling from the west. They will come from Egypt, trembling like sparrows, from Assyria, fluttering like dull doves. I will settle them in their homes, declares the Lord. Did you ever wonder why God didn't just give up on the people of Israel? 
If you read the Old Testament, it was like every other generation turned away from him. One generation would be blessed by God, and then the next generation would feel so entitled by all those blessings that they would just drift away from God and start worshiping other gods. And then God would punish them, and then they would turn around and come back and repent. And then they would be blessed again. After a few times, you'd think God would say, forget it. I'm tired of this. I want you to be faithful, not to keep turning away and then coming back. And it seems like in the book of Hosea, God does say that. But then he stops and he says, how can I give you up? I had a professor who said, why didn't God give up Israel? And he read this passage and then he said, you try giving up a son. We had a relative who had a son who stole from them, stole a car, drove away, uh, committed all sorts of crimes against them and other people. And the mother said to me one time, people say I ought to just give him up. That He's not going to change, I ought to give up on him. But he's my son. I was one of those that wondered if she should just say, you know, I'm not going to help you anymore. You've made your bed, you should lie in it. When she said that, I didn't have an answer. She was saying, I can't give him up, no matter what he does. I can't give him up. She's still going to love him. And I feel that way about my kids and my grandkids and, and other people too. Definitely feel that about Jill, but uh, not just in my own family, but others as well. It's like, I can't give up on you. There, there may be times that I would say to somebody, well, I'm not going to loan you any more money because I know what you do with it. But that doesn't mean I give up with some somebody as a person. But I can see sometimes why I would do that. But what God is saying here is he never gives up on us. As long as there's life in our bodies, there's an opportunity for us to turn to God. And there may be a point of no return where we never will make that decision. But if we ever do make that decision, we have a God who is there waiting to accept us back. Let's pray. Thank you, Father, not only for your love, but for the beautiful pictures of it in your word. That you love us more than a mother loves the baby she is nursing. That you love us more than the father who teaches his son how to walk. You love us more than somebody who would buy us back from slavery even after we turned away. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your love. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you. I really do love you and I hope everything's going well for you. Hope to see you soon. Maybe we can worship together on Sunday. Take care.